doing two back to back. Cause why not? We got time. We got the time. Hey, cheers! Thank you again for doing this. Salud, thanks for having me. We have upgraded from water to uh, juice. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, corn juice. So, while we were in our intermission, mm -hmm. it's very theater of us. Right. Actually, I like that. While we were while we were in our intermission, uh, you showed me literally the graph that you made. That was sort of like a <laughs> like a like a mission of like. An, an accomplishment list. Yeah, I and, and I'd love for you to show the people. Wow, um, there this the situation. The one before the L word, and then the one leading to Lone Star, because it's, 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 it's kind of okay. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. So like, uh, and then I, yeah, this? I was getting like very specific, like with my goals, right? So I made sure that like what you know, I'm trying to start the year out. I'm gonna divide the year up into like four quarters. I got like uh, four really good friends from New York, and they you know, introduced me this concept like fourth quarter living. So you know, you divide it up. And you, at the end of like the three months, you kind of check and see like how you're doing on your thing. Did you adjust what worked, what didn't work, that kind of thing. So it's like, all right, what's my goal? And I, I told you at first it was challenging because I wouldn't be specific. Like I was mm -hmm. like lying to myself about what I really wanted or kind of being in denial because I had some ideas. Like that goal is too big. And like some old things that people had told me back in the day, I was like still carrying around. Like, you know, Hollywood is a pipe dream. And like, you know, yes. just be happy to, you know, do the craft. And like I was believing in that more so than like, Pull that was having inside me, mm -hmm. and then like you know, at a certain point, I realized, no. What do you really want? You say it, you write it, and and go for that thing. So like, mm -hmm. I sat down there, I wrote it, and I got specific, and I noticed that that was like kind of working. And then when I have the big specific goal, I can work on like smaller, like benchmark goals that then like I can break it down to like little actions that I could take, you know, in a day or like at the end of the week, I want to complete this action or whatever, and they also be contributing to that major goal, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was like my like method. And so, you know, I was like, let me get very specific about my goal. And so the goal that I had, I had like four for uh, 2017 and like this didn't manifest until 2019, but it's like, it is what it is. But I got real specific and I was like, I really want to be cast in an ensemble TV show as a trans male character with some stars and some strong actors and hold my own because the role and story resonate with me and my process is well exercised and understood. This TV show brings me to LA. And what happens next, Brian? Well, I uh, came out to LA <laughs> after like some really serious internal debate too. I was like, I don't know if I should go. I don't know my wife; she's like attached to New York. I don't know. But I'm going to go to LA for like three months. I'll be here from April to June. I'm going to learn the lay of the land. So if this is something that we are going to do, I can at least give her some information when I get back, and I'll go back and blah blah blah. And so I, I got here. Mm -hmm. and I was working on that goal, mm -hmm. and like as soon as I got here, I like got an audition for the L word. Mm -hmm. And so I. Audition for the L word. I felt really good about the audition. Shout out to the L word. Hey, yes, yes. Generation Q, thank you very much. And so I did the audition and I ended up booking the role. And I was like, this is amazing. I'm so excited. This is a step up. It's a recurring guest star. It's like a, a strong role that I've had in anything else. Tra characters, trans. I, I really like the creative team. I would work with Marjorie Ryan Lewis. She's a, like amazing. I love working in the room with her. You know, they, she has a trans, a trans male, like, um, her, was her assistant, you know, wow. so I'm like, this is great, wow. the showrunner's assistant with the trans guy, like, oh, oh yeah. this is next level, this is great. So I was very excited, you know, for that. And then uh, we weren't going to start filming until, I think, like, July. So I had, like, some time mm -hmm. in between. And so I was like, okay, well, I've reached this goal that's been on my board for, like, two years. Like, what do I, what's my goal now? Like, I started, you know, kind of working. I was like, well, you know, I do want to be a series regular because you get to take a character on a longer journey. Oh, yeah. You, there's deeper work I mean like it's just I think it's what I want to do like I'm a theater person so I like that developing a character over time thing I feel like that's what I want to do you know and so I was like well write it down because I don't see what you want so mm -hmm. in May I changed my goal and I said alright I want to be cast as a series regular in an ensemble action oriented procedural TV show that keeps me working in LA and increases my footprint which is not on my most stuff. <laughs> Like, come on, that's like, that's, that's bizarre. <laughs> like, word for word. You know, and I remember uh, I, the day, another day, like, we felt like very serendipitous because I'm sitting with my good friend Alex, who was somebody who I was able to couch sit with, right? And we're at this David Makes Man premiere, which is an amazing show that's on, on just one of Peabody, by the way. Mm -hmm. So we're sitting there, we're at the, uh, at the premiere of this. It's great. I'm excited to be in the room with people from my uh, sugar family, the home family. You know, we're just very excited. And he asked me, like, well, what do you really want to do? Like, what if you could do anything, what would you dream about? I'm like, well, yeah, I would love to play, you know, a, you know, a cop or something like that. I'm like, first responder in the show, so I really like 
this about those shows. I like what you know, when people are pushing their limits, how they show up, and like there's just a lot about that kind of work that I want to do. And uh, as soon as I stopped talking to him, mm -hmm. like I, put, I said it, mm -hmm. and I got an email from my manager like, now we one Lone Star spinoff series regular casting for a trans male character. I was like, are you kidding me? And like we looked at each other, like, oh, oh, right. This is what I knew. Again, this is what I was like. You're on the path. So we're there. We're very excited about that. And I'm like, oh, this is great. I got a couple days to prepare for this. Wonderful. We're getting ready to watch the show. They bring out uh, the creative team behind the show, and they bring out a guest, a special guest, to introduce the the head creator. You know, Terrell Allen Allen Credit. I'm like, ooh, Oprah. What? Oprah comes out. I'm like, oh snap! The same room is Oprah. I'm hyped as all get out. I'm like, Oprah's here. So I pull out my phone. I'm like, and I'm breathing the same oxygen as Oprah Winfrey. I'm, I'm like, I'm recording it. I'm like, this is amazing. She gives a really great speech. He talks about the development of his show and why he's doing the work that he does. I'm yeah. very inspired. I watched the show. It is beautiful. It is amazing work. And they finish. I'm starving. Mm -hmm. I have to use the bathroom. So I'm like, everybody's like talking, and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna get upstairs to where the food and stuff is now. So I can like get the food. And do my thing before it gets crowded. So I get upstairs, me and Alex were like, you know, pilfering around, we're looking for stuff to eat. We get across these like food. I'm eating my little slider and I turn around and there's Oprah. Oh just free range Oprah, just living her best life. <laughs> like no posse or anything. She's there, she sees me see her. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is okay, engage, talk, there's Oprah, talk to Oprah, oh my gosh, okay. Hi, Oprah, hi. Uh, hi. you shake her hand? Well I wanted to, but I had a slider, so I'm like, Oprah <laughs> <laughs> Oprah, I've always wanted to meet you. So like we, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like I've thought about this since I was a kid. Like she's inspired me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like we haven't met yet, but I wanted to introduce myself. She goes, I know who you are. Oh my god. That's what I said. <laughs> what the fuck? I was like, excuse me. And she's like, yeah, your uh, Queen Sugar, the episode that you just saw, saw the other day, and I saw it. And I was like, I saw the first episode you did. You were remarkable. Oh, running from Oprah. Oprah said that to my face. Bro, oh my God, what is going to on? To my face. I was like, you know what? This is, you are on the path, I'm my like, friend. I think that's probably why I did so well in the, the long throw. Like, oh, oh yeah, you're like, 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 this is good. I don't need anybody else Shoot. in the I felt great. I was like, this is amazing. So that that was another like sign for me that like I'm on the path. So I felt Your like, signs are so loud. Are they crazy? Like, <laughs> it's like, do you need to know what? No. It's like, Leo, yeah. Oprah. Oprah. Okay, yeah. okay, I think we're on the right path. Yeah, so like, that's amazing, yeah, dude. It was, it was like what a night. And if my buddy Alex wasn't there, I would have no idea. Like, I was like, is this real? Is this real? And the whole conversation with somebody I've I admired like so much, and like she knew who I was. Mm -hmm. That's when I'm like, oh, I have, I've, I've moved to a different space. And then we started actually working on the show, and then like a lot of the experience that I got from like actually doing the work that I like wished for, and then feeling like it took this long for a reason. Like all the things I had to learn, all the stuff I had to master, because if I got this opportunity before, I don't think I would have been able to show up yeah. in the way that I did. I don't yeah. think I would have been prepared to talk about things, to be as vulnerable as I needed to be for that level of visibility and representation. Like that episode we did studs, like mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have been brave enough to do that three or four years ago, but where I am now, or where I was when we shot that in my life, I'm like, I understood the value of it and why I needed to push my own comfort zone to bring that story, the truth that it needed, you know? It's also, uh, it's, it's again, it's that perfect timing and that like everything came together. It's like four years ago, shows like this didn't exist there were on, on network television. Oh, no way. So it literally took until 2019 for Ryan Murphy to be like, this is the kind of character I want to show. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of character I want the show to represent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course you were there. You were literally destined for this role. I mean, it was. It's, a, it's like, and now it's one of the biggest shows on television. <laughs> uh, like that's crazy. It, because it four years ago, two years ago, it wasn't. There was. There's nothing like this. And I mean, I think that's the value of having like representation behind the scenes. Yes. You know, and having like someone like like Ryan and like Tim mm -hmm. working on a show like this, who know that the responsibility in their hands, and oh, knowing yeah. that you know. We are going to create these roles. We're going to create these characters that come from an authentic place. We're going to bring people into this room mm -hmm. who can help contribute to telling these stories in the most authentic way possible. Yes, exactly. You know, like having that support and knowing that we're going to bring the people in here to make sure that the stories we're telling are, are, are right 
or like are real at, mm-hmm. at, the, at the very least is, is like so important. And you're absolutely right. Like I was looking and hoping for yeah. like work like this to have a character like Paul. Like again, there was no character like him. No. You know, for me to even aspire to. Mm-hmm. You know, so now I feel like we're in a much better place where we do have these characters that we aspire to on our show and across the board. You know, like when you have shows like Pose, you have shows like Billions with non-binary characters. Yeah, Deputy was on our network and they yes. had a non-binary character. So it's like, it gives people like me aspiration of what is possible for them yes. when they thought for such a long time it wasn't. Yes, so, and now it's literally the first one in network television history. Mm-hmm. Now, something extremely historic is happening in the world. Yeah. And it's happening, of course, in this country. Mm-hmm. The Black Lives Matter movement. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you your perspective of things. How did we get here? Why are we here? Mm-hmm. And how do we maintain this trajectory for actual change? How do we maintain this revolution that is happening? How do we make sure that it keeps moving forward? Mm-hmm. And how do we make sure that it's not just another trending topic? Mm-hmm. Or how do we make sure that it's not just like a hashtag? Mm-hmm. And I everything that sort of we've talked about the main one of the main things that sort of stick out is inspiration Mm -hmm. and and being at the right place at the right time and I think we are in a very special time where we can make change on such a massive scale Mm -hmm. and truly wake people up and shake them by their shoulders Mm -hmm. and be like this is what's happening this has been happening for far too fucking long Mm -hmm. and now that all of you are forced to see it, Mm -hmm. how do we do something about it? And please, Mm -hmm. this cannot be just another thing that was like, oh, remember like the protest in Mm -hmm. 2020? Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Yeah, no, we're we're absolutely at a a point where major change is happening, but it's gonna take a sustained effort to maintain. Also, I'm sorry to interrupt you, it's it's one of the, very few times that major change is wanted mm-hmm. and requested mm-hmm. from the masses. And that doesn't happen very in often. The, in the present, I would say so for sure. I feel like we're seeing a, something that is cyclical in this country because like, the way this country has been set up, it, there's inequality just inherent in the way that it, it was set up. You yeah. know? Like, even though the words on the page of the Constitution and these documents that the forefathers wrote said something, the actual mechanisms that mm-hmm. the, that sustained the country and built the country didn't reflect that. Exactly. And so it was built on inequality. It's sustained yep. like we are in a capitalist society, which means that someone has to capitalize on somebody else. Yeah. And so it can be sustained for a certain period of time, but after a while, people who realize that they have power and strength in numbers, that they are being oppressed, say enough is enough. Mm-hmm. And what has happened in this country is that the people who are being oppressed, is, and usually it'd be based on a system of white supremacy, the people Mm -hmm. who are of color who are being suppressed, black people who are being suppressed in this country, we say that we are having enough, we fight back, we need resistance, but then people who are white realize, hey, we are also being oppressed by this system as well, and this isn't serving us, you know what I mean? And we're being pit against one another, Exactly. you know? And then once we realize that we're being pit against one another while someone else or other people or the mechanism in place is taking advantage of all of us, we Mm -hmm. get together and we say enough is enough, and then we have a, 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 a clash and a fight. And either major change happens mm-hmm. that you know keeps us uh, you know at a certain uh, I don't want to say necessarily peace, but you know it costs for major change. Mm-hmm. Change does happen, but not complete. So what's been happening is we've had like these incomplete moments of revolution because it ends up getting suppressed, yeah. or you know you get worn down so mm-hmm. much fighting for what you need to have happen that you take concessions in a way that don't need for lasting change. Exactly. Right? So as long as this country is set up under a white supremacist you know, system of capitalization, this is going to keep happening, right? And what's been happening is people kind of in the middle who feel like they don't necess- they're not at the top and they don't have that much power, but they're benefiting from the power structure. Mm-hmm. Like they can be dormant for a while yeah. until it oppresses everyone and then they go oh wait this is not good yeah so what's happening is we're at a moment right now where people who you know have been dormant are like this is actually isn't good mm-hmm. it's not good for anyone and you know a threat injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere so i can't have peace or you know what most people are seeing right now 
who are now recognizing what the Black Lives Matter movement really is about. But like, how can we sit here and act like we have peace when other human beings are being subjugated? And my inactivity is contributing to it. Exactly. And so a lot of people are realizing that this didn't just happen. It didn't just happen. It's been going for hundreds of years for a long time. Like, uh, that's just the nature of this country. And like, people are benefiting from it, from not taking action. Mm -hmm. And now they're realizing that, okay, I'm going to have to make some sacrifices if I really want to live up to the ideals of what I say I'm about and what I say my country is about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's why more people are starting to get involved. Oh, yeah. Because like, how long can you look at it? And I think it was easy to sweep under the rug in the past mm -hmm. because we didn't have so much video and we didn't have oh, yeah. so much people-driven media. Like social media has been great yes. because it's literally coming from the people and they're showing exactly. this is what we are going through. You cannot look away, and I'm not going to frame it in a way that uh, vilifies the victims. I'm going to show you the truth. And people are like seeing the truth, and they realize, I can't ignore it anymore. No. And they don't want to. So I'm, your like, face. so I'm like, this is, this, is a great, this is great in terms of people waking up to things. But they have to remember, we all have to remember that it's going to take sustained effort. So oh, yeah. the feeling and the emotion that you have right now from seeing those images of George Floyd being murdered from knowing what happened to Breonna Taylor, from hearing about the trans women that are being murdered, you have these feelings and you're taking this immediate action and response. I'm like, that's amazing, that's great. Please keep doing it mm -hmm. because we have a lot of dismantling to do. Oh, yeah. We really want the change that we're, that we're asking for. I mean, we're trying to dismantle hundreds of years of a set up mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. of a system that is made to work against the masses. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to flip it on its back right now. Mm -hmm. And that's going to take all hands on deck. It's going to take all hands on deck. And it won't happen overnight. No. It's not going to happen in a couple weeks. No. It won't happen in a couple months. And it takes only like the amount of self reflection that, it, that it's going to take and the amount of personal work that you have to do, at, you know, to dismantle your own ideas about the systems is, is going to take work. And it's really uncomfortable. And so sometimes it's, a, it's okay to be visible and do these like very visible immediate actions and then you go out and you feel good about the thing that you did, but you still have that work to do mm -hmm. to really tackle your ideas about things and to tackle these uh, habits that, that yes. people have, you know, like with performative allyship, mm -hmm. right? Like, and to, to listen, you know, I, this is a period for me where like, you know, I'm learning more about the activist work that has been going on for years for black lives. Yeah. You know, I've been doing things through my art, but there are people whose lives have been on organizing protests and movements and coming up with solutions to these problems. So right now we have a lot of people like speaking up, which is great, but I want us to, if we are not comfortable, if we don't know enough about what the activists are doing or how, what are the actual solutions that you know we need to do, then I want to point people in the direction of people who have been doing that work, exactly. who have come to the solutions and then just need our support. If you need me to contribute you know, financially, I will. If you need me to turn the microphone over to what you've been, been saying and amplify your voice, I will do that. If mm -hmm. you need me to you know, do whatever that I can do to actually contribute in a way that actually moves us forward towards this dismantling and this like, I don't know what, what's, what's a good word for it, but it's like we, we have to, we really have to like change this, uh, this country. So if you are doing that work, I want to help. Yes. And I can't. I mean, so we that. should help. Yeah. Uh, everyone should be helping. Mm -hmm. um, especially because like, not to mention, it's literally election year. Mm -hmm. Right? And this literally happened, I think, yesterday or two days ago. LeBron James and some of the biggest athletes in all around sports, as well as Kevin Hart, mm -hmm. are creating an organization called More Than a Vote. Mm -hmm. And they are going to personally make sure that black and brown people are not oppressed anymore when it comes to voting. Mm -hmm. Because those communities are targeted probably more than any other community in the country when it comes to voting. Oh, I know. And Yeah, LeBron, voter suppression LeBron, in this country is real. It's insane. It's real. So it's like, it, it, it is very easy to say, go out and vote. Mm -hmm. But we also have to know that it's not that easy for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Especially the communities that are being affected right now. Mm -hmm. And he specifically, I just learned this. Uh, if you look at it from a follower perspective, uh, he is the highest followed athlete in America mm -hmm. um, with 136 million people across Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, mm -hmm. and 100 
and 37 million people voted in 2016. So if we can get people like that, people like us, mm -hmm. people that don't have an influence, people that literally can easily talk to their neighbor, talk to their family, mm -hmm. talk to their friends, mm -hmm. if that complete um, uh, um, um, all hands on deck sort of mentality comes together, mm -hmm. then we can actually do something. Yeah. And we can do that with voting. Mm -hmm. We can do that with getting the bills passed that we want to get passed. We can actually make change yeah. when everyone is on board. Mm -hmm. And this level of change is like a multi-pronged attack. Like, oh yeah, we need to have the protests. We need to have people mm -hmm. in the streets disrupting the status quo. And so that doesn't work throughout history. It, it works, right? And then you also need people to financially support that yes. protest. So even if you don't, you not a bodies in the street kind of person, you can donate and you can support. And then you have educators yes. who are can like spread the information, you know, to make sure that people know what's going on. They're making informed decisions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then you you yourself can vote, but before you vote, make sure you are educating yourself exactly. about what you're voting for, exactly. what's on the table. Because you know, we know it's ha that November there's a huge election, and we're looking at this executive branch, and that's we need to do that. But then there's all these local and state level yep. elections that are happening, yep. and there are laws that are being passed like right now that impact people today. There's laws that are being that are being passed right now that like are against our interests, exactly. that are against the interests of other people. Maybe you don't necessarily, you know, fit in that community, but it's going to impact you. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they, the, the Trump administration has just moved, you know, to roll back uh, protections for health care for transgender people right now. You know what I mean? And, like, the Supreme Court has to, has to vote on that. And if, if you're not paying attention to who you are supporting when it comes to Supreme Courts, you're not speaking up, you know, when it comes to who you're going to vote for in these other places besides the president and these, like, you know, higher, higher tier things. And that's what's going to happen. States are passing these anti-trans bills, states oh, yeah. are like blocking bills, you know, so you need to know what's going on at the state level, you need to know what's going on like in your local community to make sure that the things that need to happen to make sure that we can live the lives we want to live and that people are protected, people have equal access to healthcare, people have equal uh, rights and their rights are protected, exactly. you, you have to inform yourself. Yeah. And there's a lots of people who are putting that information out. Yes. You know, it's up to you to like educate yourself. Yeah, and, and you know, like for example, like Twitter and Instagram, we have the ability now to spread that information like wildfire, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because obviously everyone's, like you said, is paying attention to the top. Right. We know a lot about the top. Mm -hmm. We know about like what he wants and what he wants mm -hmm. and why we gotta get him out and we gotta get him in, mm -hmm. you know? But everyone under, like when I voted for the primaries, like there were pages and pages of people that I'm sure not a lot of people have e a, either heard of mm -hmm. or even know what they do. Exactly. And that's what we have to do. We have to educate so you know like, who this person is in this job and who this person yep. is in this job because a lot of people have no idea. They're not paying attention. I had no idea. Yeah, I mean, we're I not, to educate myself for days. We're having a hard time in like paying attention to the things that we have the power to control. Like you can vote for the sheriff. You can vote for, you know, you can vote this, for almost everything. Everything, right? And it's like you can vote for the city council. You can you can vote for, you know, legislators. So we're these Congress is passing these laws that go against us and it's like because the legislators have been voted in. But if you vote in somebody who's going to work for the things that are important to you, yes. you have to deal with that. Yes. You know what I mean? So the executive branch is important, mm -hmm. but so is Congress. So you need oh, yeah. to be paying attention to who is running for Congress. And like right now, we've been trying to get anti-lynching legislation passed in this country for 100 years. And the bill was almost passed, but one senator, you know what I mean? One senator blocked it. And like you can vote that person out. We can vote that person out. Isn't so, it terrifying that we're literally talking about that fucking word mm -hmm. and trying to make it not be a thing anymore <laughs> in 2020? Mm -hmm. 100, 100 plus years of work on this. But again, I, I always try to find the positive of things and, and you have to keep people motivated. Mm -hmm. Like, we know now. We know that we can actually affect these things. Mm -hmm. We can affect the people that have power mm -hmm. because there's so much power when everyone comes together. There's so much power. You can see it right now. You can see it right now. I you mean, can't ignore when the masses come together. Yeah. I mean, you there's cannot. a laundry list of changes that have been, that have been happening in relationship to the, the protests that have been happening now and to the outcry that's been happening now. But there's still a lot more to do. Oh, yeah. And it's going to take pushing. Yes. It's going to take pushing. Yes. So. And I, and I want to, you know, I want to sort of say this without it being, you know, mean or rude, but it's like, uh, please 
um, keep moving forward. Please, please, um, I, I heard someone say that you don't have to be in every single lane at the same time right now. Mm -hmm. Pick a lane and just keep moving forward in that lane. And if you can inspire someone else to get into another lane, please, yeah. it, whether it's spreading information, donating, uh, just retweeting mm -hmm. as much information as you can, mm -hmm. uh, going to the streets, voting, mm -hmm. talking to people, uh, talking to people that have uh, influence, yeah. talking to people that uh, are in communities, mm -hmm. talking to people that are maybe uh, have power in, in, in smaller, let's say, governments in your city or yes. in your even in your neighborhood. Yes. We have all these council people. Um, so please, just like, I, I beg of you, find a lane. Find the lane that you feel you can, um, you can uh, add to. Find a lane that you're passionate about and keep it moving forward because you're going to have so many people join you. Mm -hmm. And they, every single lane is going to be filled up and everyone's moving forward. And that's how we're going to make something happen. And that is the only way change happens. Yeah. And it happens across the board, mm -hmm. whether it's people, uh, children, animals, the planet. Like, this is how change happens. Yeah. And, and I, I beg of you, please do not let this be another trend. Please don't let this be another hashtag. Mm -hmm. um, because people's lives are at risk mm -hmm. every single day, every single hour. Yeah. I mean, two transgender people literally got killed a couple days ago. Did I? Yes. Like two days ago, yeah. So it's like every every minute counts. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you for doing it. Thank you for joining. Thank you for uh, being part of this revolution that hopefully one day we look back on it, man, and then say, man, the human race is an incredible, an incredible group of people, and we were resilient. Mm -hmm. Not only were we faced with uh, uh, nationwide protest and, and, and unrest and, 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 and rioting and, 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 and looting and, 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 and cities burning down, but we had a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And if we could get through this, we get through anything. Mm -hmm. and, that, and just know what you're getting through it for. It's like knowing that racism is a disease in this country that's woven into <sighs> the fabric that we don't need to deal with anymore and that we can let go and we can really work through the stop, but you have to play your part in that. Yes. Everybody has a part in dismantling racism in this country. You know what I mean? And if, if this is something that you've been uncomfortable with, like, what did you say? It's, it's, it's the biggest pandemic we're dealing with. Yeah, it's like, you gotta push through that discomfort. You gotta be willing to sacrifice some of your comfort for the benefit of the rest of the people in this country, for the exactly. benefit of the black people that you love, the black people whose art you consume, for the black people whose athleticism you admire so much. Like, you have to do something to support equality. And that means checking your own thoughts. That means checking your own habits. That means checking your own loved ones. That That's means right. stepping outside of your privilege, stepping outside yeah. of your comfort, and yeah. using that to get the foot off the neck of the black people in this country. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to do it. Quite literally. Literally. As, 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 as brutal as that sounds. And, and it's like, there's another thing that I keep hearing going around, and it's, it's sort of a, just a good mentality for a lot of things is, is get comfortable in the uncomfortable mm -hmm. because this is not this is not pleasant yeah. this this is like we're seeing all these horrific images and videos mm -hmm. but it's what's happening yes and we have to do something about it because it's like what's who else is gonna nobody who else yeah. is gonna and it's like you just kind of got to care and like even if even if it, it's not necessarily like you know we tend to attach to people who like look like us or like, you know, resonate, like wrong is wrong. You know what I mean? Like it shouldn't just be me as a black trans man talking about the death of black trans women. It shouldn't be trans women talking about the death of black trans women. Everyone should be upset about, you know, black trans women being killed. Exactly. Everyone should be upset exactly. about this. And if you are upset, you can take action about it. I know. You can do something, just do something that you've never done before. And I feel like that's what this moment has been about. A lot of people are doing things that they've never done before. And mm -hmm. I'm just asking that you continue to do that. Yeah. No matter how uncomfortable it feels, it's worth it. Oh, it's worth it. It's are you worth kidding it. me? It's, it's, literally, it's, literally, it's literally people's lives are, are, yeah. are at stake. And um, it's been going on for far too long. Far too long. You know what I mean? If you're not going to do this, like, what, what are we here for then? What are you here for if you're not going? I don't know. I can't think of anything. <laughs> I'm not... That's not what I'm in this for. It ain't to just okay. pay bills, I tell you that. Okay? You're here for something greater than that. And you can do something now. Like let's 
let's show our kids and our grandkids how resilient the human race was. Mm -hmm. Like, let that be a motivation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Humans looking out for other humans. Yeah. That's it. Boom. Drink to that. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry for all the cursing. He gets I, he's very passionate. I always he curse. God he's damn. passionate. <laughs> well, dude, I love you. Thank you for doing this. Um, I'm about to make this man his first impossible burger ever. <laughs> I'm only happy on me. I'm more than possible now. Y'all wish me luck. This is going to be delicious. Um, again, thank you for tuning in to our two part Instagram live yes. TV. Um, I have a very special guest on uh, Sunday night. And then I have a very special guest uh, Tuesday night that I'm beyond excited about. Um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you guys later. Um, uh, so please, thank you again for tuning in. Brian, thank you for literally just talking about yourself, your experiences, your perspective. Um, I learned so much that, I, I mean, I've known you for a, almost a year now, and there's so much I learned that I didn't know. Um, and uh, it is so important to learn everybody's perspective right now um, so we can truly uh, understand each other. Um, and uh, thank you. We love you guys, and please, please, please take care of each other. <sighs>